This is an RCA Victor 63E 78 RPM record player. It's from 1948. It was the last standalone 78 RPM only record player that RCA made before they introduced 45s in 1949. It's a standalone record player. By that I mean it has its own amplifier and speaker. So you don't have to hook this up to anything else to get it to play. It's, it does it all. This is my parts set. I bought it uh, to get the tone arm because my good set had a bad tone arm. I had a good player that was complete, but it had a bad tone arm. So I bought this one for parts. This one had no amplifier or speaker. It was just a cabinet broken turntable motor had a good tone arm and a good bottom. So I'm gonna, this is the bottom I'm gonna use when we put this one back together. Our project is to take these two units and make one good one. This one, as you can see, has already had some work done to it. I've repainted the top and I've reflocked the platter. So it started out looking a lot like this one. In fact, I've got some photos I might stick in the video, I don't know, but it started out looking a lot like this one and, it, and I've done the work to make it look a little better. We still need to, to clean and polish the Bakelite to really make it look great. And then I have to put the RCA tag back here. Um, but it should be a good project, should be a lot of fun. This is the amplifier. It is three tubes, speaker, volume. Um, if we flip it over, you can see the uh, original capacitors and resistors inside. We're gonna be replacing all of these capacitors. These are the electrolytics. There are two, so I believe it's a 50 and an 80. And then we have these wax capacitors will be replaced. We will test the resistors as we go to see what kind of shape they're in and if they need replacing, they'll be replaced. Um, the volume has some components in there for, um, take that off. You can see it has uh, two wax capacitors and a resistor. And uh, also, these are the tone arm wires. So we will uh, do the same thing. We'll replace both of these capacitors and we will test that resistor. And um, then we'll get it all put together. These are interesting players. There's a switch built into the tone arm. When you pull up on the tone arm, it activates that switch and the um, turntable starts to spin and the amp turns on and warms up. And then all you have to do is just drop the needle and play. And... Um, that's about it. They're pretty basic. There's no record changer. There's no automatic shutoff. You just play one record at a time and do everything manually. But they're, they're really good uh, little players. They sound great. And uh, you'll see and hear all of that as we go along. I'm going to do this in segments and edit them all together into one video. So that's the introduction. Let's move on to the next segment. So like I said in the introduction, I've already done repainting and, and had the platter reflocked on this and um, the platter I sent out and had it done professionally. I don't know if I'd do that again. It was pretty expensive, but I wanted to try it once just to see how it would come out and it came out very nice. Um, painting I did myself. I have a short slideshow coming up next that's going to show you how it got to this point and then we'll get back to the videos. So this is what it looked like when I got it off of eBay. It was less than $10 because it was in pretty rough shape, but it was complete other than the issue with the tone arm. Uh, the cartridge mounts were broken in the tone arm, so I had to uh, either glue the cartridge in or find a new tone arm, so that's what I did. That's the RCA tag. That's the volume control under the tone arm. That's the platter before it got reflocked and after. Had a really bad uh, needle scratch and a gouge that I had to work on quite a bit. Had to sand them down. Um, didn't feel too bad about doing this because obviously it was going to be repainted. So I didn't have to worry about trying to repolish the Bakelite so I could sand it and get rid of that uh, scratch. And it came out pretty good. Now you can still see the gouge there, the little dot. Uh, that took some doing. I, I filled it and uh, it pretty much went away when I repainted it, but you can still kind of see it, you know, in, in the right light and everything, but not too bad. Came out pretty good. So we're just getting started on this. We're, uh, I'm replacing the electrolytic capacitors, taking out the old one, putting in the new one. Got one more wire to go and those will be done. Then we'll start in on these tubular capacitors. Have... Uh, 
all my capacitors and resistors here ready to go. I've tested the resistors and most of them are out of tolerance. Most of them have drifted high. That's just testing them in circuit. I haven't disconnected. Usually you disconnect one side and test them. I'll retest them as I do the capacitors. If, if there's a capacitor connected to them, I'll go ahead and disconnect one side of the resistor and test it again to see. But um, it looks like most of them have drifted high. The sand ohm resistor is still good. This resistor, someone added this later. They replaced an old wire wound resistor with this. And this, this one's still within tolerance. The 150 is just within tolerance. I'll probably keep that. But the rest of them, there's one down here. They all seem to have drifted high. We'll double check that, but it's pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that uh, I'm going to end up replacing them. Anyway, that's where we're at right now. Just getting started on recapping this, and uh, we'll check back in a bit. Well, we're chugging right along. I've done a couple of things. I've uh, replaced this capacitor, replaced this 10 meg resistor, and uh, this 5.6 k ohm resistor over here. And of course, we've already talked about the electrolytics. Those are all done now and installed. Um, going to do this 0.1 wax capacitor now. We're going to replace it with this. And I've got the heat shrink on my leads. Um, so we're set to put that in. So uh, I'm going to do that and maybe a couple other things and then we'll check back. Well, there's that 0.1 installed. I was looking at the one next to it. These two were actually stuck together. You know, when this was in here, <laughs> you can see where they were stuck together. This one was leaking wax all over these tube sockets. This one is, you know, leaking down onto these tube sockets. These things are, you know, look at the, look at the top of that. So yeah, these are, that's why you replace these. You know, they, they go bad. So we're gonna go after this one next. Um, so 0.02, I've got the replacement here in the bag, so that'll be next. Well, I'll give you some idea how I do this. Um, this capacitor, this resistor, and this resistor were all connected here. So I cut all the leads, and then I use my soldering iron, and a pair of hemostats and you just you just grab the lead and heat it up and just gently wiggle it until the solder dries so that the lead isn't stuck to it anymore and then you uh you can usually get it out of there and uh, so you just you remove all the old leads and clean up the connection as you can see and now i will uh, start installing the new ones and uh, so we'll do this capacitor from here to here and then we will connect this resistor here and this resistor here, the new ones, and get this connection all soldered up. And then we can do the rest of the, you know, the other end of the new resistor here. And the other end of this resistor goes here. And when we do that end, then we'll have to do this capacitor at the same time. But that's how you do that. Okay, so you can see I've got the new capacitor in place, this resistor and this resistor. And they're all going to the same tube connection, you know, tube socket connector. Um, once I solder it, which I haven't done yet, all of these, all this extra lead length will be trimmed away. Okay, there you have it. This connection is complete and the uh, excess lead length has been trimmed away. Now we will finish replacing this resistor with this one and this resistor with this one. So we'll do this one first, we'll disconnect this one and then uh, install the new one in the same location. And then when I do this one, I will get rid of this and install this one here. And at the same time, I'm gonna have to replace this capacitor because it's connected to the same place. And uh, that's just how these things go. Once you, you know, sometimes when, you're, when you disconnect something and install the new component, you end up having to do another one at the same time because of where they're connected. One of the problems with replacing some of these old components with new ones is that the new components are smaller the leads on this new resistor are too short to get from here to here. So I'm gonna, I left the old lead here, so it turns out I won't have to re-solder this connection. I'm going to J-hook it 
you just bend the lead into a J shape on each one and uh, hook them into each other and crimp them and then solder it. And then I will put a piece of heat shrink over that because this resistor, the original resistor was insulated so that it didn't ground out to the chassis. And we'll do the same thing with this lead before we attach it here. Okay, well, there you have it. That one is soldered in place along with the new resistor. Like I said, we uh, used heat shrink on that to insulate it. And um, so that is all. I went ahead and replaced every single resistor because like I said, they were all, they had all drifted high. They were all out of tolerance. This one was close, but I, you know, I have these. I have a bunch of these from Radio Shack. So it's just a half watt, 150 ohm resistor. So I might as well throw a new one in there. Um, like I said, we just kept these two, the only ones that uh, I didn't replace. So this is all done as far as caps and resistors. The only thing I need to do now is put a new line cord on it, new power cord, because this one, you know, it doesn't even have a plug on it. It's just, you know, so that'll be next. And then we'll have to do the uh, volume control, get these two capacitors and that resistor and uh, see if we have enough length on these original tone arm wires or if I'm gonna have to replace them. And uh, the other half of that power cord goes into the switch. This is the switch I was talking about. When that tone arm pops up, it activates everything. That's the switch right there. And I'll have to attach that new power cord, that new line cord in there. But uh, I think we'll call this the end of part one. Thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for part two.